Hi, everybody. We're live. Hello, hello, hello. I, I'm seeing all of your wonderful, um, all of your wonderful chats coming through. Um, I want to say hi to Cheryl, who's just said good morning. Um, we have, oh my gosh, Jane from Malaysia. Oh my gosh, she used to go to my tri class with Chloe. Amazing. Um, Michelin is here. Uh, I just want to say hi to everybody who said hi to Christy, to Sonia. First ever yoga class, that's why we're here. Um, Jeanette is here from, uh, and then we've got, uh, Jeanette is from Illinois. We've got um, Christy, of course, from Canada. Lynn from Italy. Everybody from all over the world. I've got Suzanne here. Um, Lynn from Italy. Oh, I said that already. Estella, brilliant. Um, really, really excited to have you guys here. We've got Kim from Virginia. Um, Gonzalo, hello. Um, South Carolina, yeah, just put in if you've got an account. Loris from Palm Beach, amazing, you guys. Um, my goal in life is to get one day all 50 states um, and may maybe even all countries, probably not, but maybe all continents, um, apart from a Antarctica and Arctic, but across uh, on here. Um, hi, Gonzalo from Chelsea. Amazing, Renee from London, you are here, awesome. Perfect, Amy from Georgia incredible um you guys thank you so much for joining me uh youtube live is amazing um it's my new favorite sort of virtual tool and today what i wanted to go through is um and hopefully i'll be able to do this once a week sort of like a 30 minute beginners class that's my plan um to do this once a week just to really instruct you on how uh some of the yoga poses the most common yoga poses work so eventually hopefully you can come to if you're not already coming to a full um hour class um i just want to say hi to maria from michigan amazing molly from virginia um olivia from charlotte north carolina incredible you guys just keep saying hi there and i will definitely call you out so with yoga if you've never done a yoga class before you will find that the, the yoga teacher will always say, try to link your poses with your breath. But if you're new to yoga, that's actually quite hard because you're so much thinking about if you're doing the yoga poses right, that you're like, how can I breathe and do the yoga poses at the same time? So for today's class, again, I just want you to take the breath and just put it to one side. You're still going to be breathing for your body and we'll add on to that a little bit later. But right now, I just want to talk you through, um, I want to talk you through some of the most popular yoga poses. So we're going to start, actually, we are going to start going into a yoga session here. You're just going to follow along. We're going to take it bit by bit, and I'm going to hopefully, um, in great detail, instruct you on where your feet should be, your knees, all that stuff, your shoulders. So I think the best way with yoga is just to really dive in, and then I'm going to instruct you. I will be then cueing inhale and exhale, and when I do that, just then maybe take an inhale, and then maybe take an exhale as well. And then the more we start to practice together, the more you're going to get used to using the breath to flow and the poses uh, together. They just come together um, simultaneously, and it, so it's a wonderful flow. So um, uh, brilliant. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to just start in a seated position. So I just want you to come down in a seated position. So while you guys are making your way down to a seated position, I'm just going to say hi to... Um, uh, Arizona, to Las Vegas, um, to Tiffany in Connecticut, to Bax is here. Awesome. It is going to be saved. Yes. So it is going to be saved. You'll have access to this. So we're going to come into just a comfortable seated position. You don't have to go into full lotus or anything like that. Just come to a comfortable seated position and just place the palms of the hands down onto your knees or on your thighs and give your shoulders a good roll up, back and down. So we're just looking to lengthen the spine. So looking to really lengthen the spine, but keep the chin just parallel to the floor or the mat beneath you. Eyes are closed because that's just going to help us calm the central nervous system. And we're going to take just three cleansing breaths together. So take a deep, full breath in through the nose. And I just want you to open up the mouth and exhale to empty. So, uh, and again, just inhale through the nose, fill up your body. Imagine the breath coming all the way down into your belly. 
And when you're ready, open up the mouth and exhale for your second cleansing breath. And one more time, deep full breath in. And then just open up mouth and just exhale to empty. Softening those shoulders. Great, so it's always nice just to start with some type of breath. Blink your eyes open, and we're gonna now move onto our hands and our knees into what's called tabletop. So with tabletop, we just wanna stack the shoulders over the wrists and the hips over the knees, taking the hands as wide as the shoulders and the knees as wide as the hips. You can keep your toes curled under, or you can just uncurl them and come up onto the tops of the feet. We're gonna come into what's called cat-cow stretches, and they really do represent in yoga, a lot of the poses represent what the yogi saw in animals. So to begin with, just exhale everything out of the body. So just exhale, exhale, exhale. And now as you inhale, lift your tailbone up. So the tailbone lifts up, the belly drops down, the shoulders bring them down the back, and then rather than jamming the head back, just lift up through the crown of the head. So that's coming into your cow. And as you exhale, tuck the tailbone really round the spine, protract your shoulders. It's like you're trying to press your spine up to the ceiling and let the head hang. That is your cat. And again, inhale, you lift the tailbone, the belly presses down, the shoulders come down the back, and you just find an extension, a little extension through the crown of the head. As you exhale, tuck the tailbone, so really exaggerate this, round the spine, push the floor away, let the head drop. One more round of this, we're gonna inhale, lift the tailbone, belly draws down, shoulders, they must come down the back, and then a lift out through the crown of the head. And as you exhale, you're tucking your tailbone, you've gotta round the spine, push the floor away, and let the head hang. That's your cat-cow. On your next inhale, just come back to your tabletop, to a neutral alignment in your tabletop. From here, hands are super important in yoga. It's called hasta banda. Banda means like a, an energy lock, like you're locking your hands down. Rather than just squeezing them, I just want you to spread your fingers wide. So no really squeezing here, just spread the fingers nice and wide. Now, curl your toes under. With downward facing dog, curling the toes under, we wanna lift the hips up, but then we also want to bring the hips back. So when you come into a downward facing dog, think of lifting the hips up and now drawing the hips back. Don't worry if your heels don't touch the floor beneath you. In fact, you can even bend your knees. You're better off bending your knees in downward facing dog because you'll get a longer spine rather than trying to lengthen your legs and then rounding your spine. So again, maybe just practice this. Lift the hips up, bring the hips back. It's like you're trying to bring your belly towards your thighs. Down dog at first, it might feel weird in your wrists. You might feel like this is a horrible pose. Listen, it usually takes people a few months to actually like downward facing dog. You'll start to build strength here. So if you don't like it now, that's normal, right? Just remember, trust me when I tell you this, you will eventually like downward facing dog. So in your downward facing dog, again, yes, we wanna bring the heels down towards the mat, so we lengthen the hamstrings, but of course we can always bend the knees here. If your arms are shaking or anything is shaking throughout your yoga practice, guess what? That is good. It means you are working your body. One more breath here, just shake your head out. I just want you to shake your head out, shake your head out, shake your head out. And now lift your heels as high as they will lift, even if your knees are bent. Keep the hips lifting up and just tiptoe your feet right up to that space between your hands. Keep the hips lifted, don't let them drop. Keep the hips lifted. Feet walk up to the space between the hands and now lower your heels down, boom. You're in what's called a ragdoll. Take a gentle bend of the knees, especially if you've got tight hamstrings. Even if you're here and you're rounding, that's all it is. It's a forward fold, but with a, you can have a rounded spine here. It's a ragdoll. I like to catch opposite elbows with my hands. You can do that or you can just let your arms dangle down. And now it's always nice just to swing from side to side. From here, ask yourself if your head is hanging. If it's lifted up, see if you can just bring your hands to the back of the head and then just to help to draw it down. 
Again, if you haven't done a forward fold for a long time, it's gonna feel weird at first. You're gonna get, I'm not gonna lie, you're gonna get, you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, there's all this blood flow going to my head. This feels weird. It is good. Think about your head always having to live on top of your body. Now it's all of a sudden hanging down and you're getting wonderful blood flow. This is a good feeling. This is good. A wonderful blood flow into the head, around the face. Yeah, it's good, right? This is like your, I always think of a forward fold as like a free facial. It's better than any facial money can buy. You just want to stay in that forward fold and you get that good blood flow and it's like amazing. So if you just want to say, hi, I can't hear you, but maybe you're doing this with somebody, you should sound like this. Like if I were to say, my husband is over there working the camera right now. So if I were to say good job to my husband, it would sound like this because my whole face is relaxed. So see if you could just talk like this and just be like, oh my gosh, my whole face is relaxed. My whole face is, it's like all of a sudden gravity is drawing it down. It's a good thing. And then from here, take a gentle bend in your knees and just begin to round up. So all I want you to do is just round up, round up, round up, round up, round up, keep going, rounding up. And as the upper body lifts again on top of your lower body, roll your shoulders up, back, down. Does that feel better? We do that all the time, but usually then we go back to this. So again, up, back, down. Toe heel your feet together. So in yoga, we like to have the big toes to touch and a little gap between our ankles. And again, if you need to do that up, back, and down, go ahead. Coming into what's called Tadasana. And tadasana is really important. It stands for mountain pose because you want to feel your feet rooting you down and then a lift out through the crown of the head. And we want to experience this in every yoga pose. Our lower body grounding us down and a lift out through our upper body. That's why Tadasana is so important. It's almost as if you want to find Tadasana in every pose. So we feel the feet pressing down. We make a muscle above our kneecaps. Our tailbone, you can even bring your hands there, scoops down towards the heels. Again, roll the shoulders up, back and down. And then length through the crown of the head. Not lifting up, chin can stay parallel, but imagine you want to lift out through the crown of the head, not back but out and up. And then from here, we're gonna come into our first sun salutation, what's called a Surya Namaskara A. Sun salutation A. So on your next inhale, so just breathe in here and sweep your arms up alongside your ears. So just sweep your arms up. You can keep your gaze forward. And as you next exhale, so you exhale, bring your hands all the way down. You're hinging through the hips. Bend your knees as much as you need to. And now when you next inhale, you're gonna lift up to what's called a halfway lift. Usually what happens is people are here. All I want you to do to correct that are your shoulders. Bring your shoulders down. Boom, your shoulders come down. And then stick your bum out behind you. Stick the bum out behind you. Draw your shoulders down. And eventually you're gonna get a flat back. This takes a while. Your fingertips can come up off the mat. You can have a gentle bend in the knees. You're looking for that flat back. Shoulders down, it's like chest is open. So we wanna work on this. And then we're gonna feel this in our thighs. This is good. Chest is open and again, stick your bum back behind you. Yeah, that's my English word I have adapted 20 years being here is bum. Um, from here, or I should say hips back. From here, plant your hands down. Remember how important our hands are. Spread your fingers wide. Step your right foot back and step your left foot back. We're coming into what's called a high plank. So just move the body weight over those wrists. So shoulders over the wrist. Drop your knees if you need to. If you're like, right now, Julie, that's too much, fine. Bring your knees down. We're gonna bring them down in a second. But stacking the shoulders over the wrist, so important. Fingers spread wide. Take a breath in here. And just like we did in cat-cow, lift your tailbone and just bring your chest down in between your hands. So bring your chest down in between your hands. Now we're gonna inhale, we're just gonna slide the thighs back. So slide the legs back, so we come onto the belly, keep the hands where they are, squeeze the elbows in, and we just lift up a tiny bit into what's called cobra. It's a lovely mini back bend here, lengthening the spine. You can even lift the palms, the hands up off of your mat. That's how you know you're just using your wonderful back strength here. I always have this saying, I love it, you're only as old as your spine. We wanna keep our spine healthy. This is the way to do it. 
Take another breath here. Let's just all globally breathe together. Breathe in. Doesn't that feel good? Stay here, exhale. And now bring your hands down to the mat. You're gonna lift up and back into child's pose. So hips go towards those heels. It doesn't matter if they touch. Listen, I've been doing this for a long time. They touch now, but they didn't to begin with. It doesn't matter if they touch, but you want your hips to go back and your arms to extend forward. Now bring your forehead down to the mat. So some of you, if your forehead doesn't touch, you can use a block underneath it, or you can bring your forehead down and then you use that as your anchor to start to bring the hips back. So maybe bring your forehead down, even if your hips lift, and then your hips go away from your fingers and your fingertips lengthen away from your hips, coming into a child's pose. And again, we're here for a breath. So global breath together, breathe in and breathe it out. On your next inhale, we're gonna come back up into that tabletop. So remember, shoulders stack over those wrists, hips over those knees, curl your toes under, make sure your fingers are spread wide, and lift your hips up and back. Think about that, up and back. Even if your knees are bent and even if your heels are off the mat. You can see how I look here. I have a flat back though, I have a straight spine. That's what we're looking for. Don't worry so much about the legs, they will happen, your hamstrings will open. Brilliant, and now we're gonna look at that space between the hands and we just step the right foot up. So use your hand if you need to, to step the right foot up. Yeah, you're gonna develop a lot of hip flexor strength here, but don't worry about it now. Use the left foot to step up. Use your hand to help you. We take an inhale once again, just to lift up to that halfway lift. This is called Ardha Uttanasana. Remember, you can bend your knees, your fingertips can dangle. The most important thing is if your shoulders are here, bring them down the back, down the back, like practice that down the back. And now we just exhale, we forward fold. So imagine your sitting bones are just lifting high. Your sitting bones, and again, you can keep that gentle bend in the knees. From here, we're gonna inhale, we're gonna come all the way up. So we sweep all the way up, bringing maybe the arms up uh, outside and then alongside the ears. And we exhale the hands to heart center. Pranayana So from here, we're coming into a variation of Tadasana with what's called another mudra, Anjali mudra right here. And that was our first sun salutation A. So when you hear yoga teachers talking about Surya Namaskara or sun salutation A, that was it. I'm now gonna take you into Surya Namaskara B. So sun salutation B. And you've probably seen that. And this is where we get into the warriors. So we start in for a sun salutation B in a, what's called a chair pose, ukatasana. We bend the knees and just like there's a chair behind us, we sit back in an imaginary chair. I like to squeeze my knees together because then I can feel basically my glutes engage, my inner thighs engaging. And again, we reach the arms up as much as we can alongside the ears. So remember, you're sitting down and back down and back. See if you can maybe even lift all 10 toes up off of your mat. So you can feel, in a sense, the big toe mound, baby toe mound, and inner and outer edges of your heels pressing down. So again, it's just a down and back. Practice that, feel that, down and back, down and back. Take another breath in here. And now we're just gonna exhale, we're gonna come down into that forward fold, coming down into that wonderful forward fold. We like that. We take an inhale. We lift up to that halfway lift. Remember, practice shoulders down the back. Your shoulders will love you for this. We plant the hands and we're just gonna step back today into our downward facing dog. So remember, if you need to go back to the point where you come to tabletop and then lift the hips up and back, go ahead and do that so you can start to feel that a little bit more. From here, we're gonna look at the space between the hands and again, we're gonna step our right foot to that space between the hands. Use your hand to help you. You can use your hand to the back of the calf to help you step that right foot up. Our back foot, our left foot, comes down at about, I would say, a 75 to 80 degree angle. 75 to 80 degree angle, so it's down. Right knee's bending over that right ankle. 
and we inhale to lift the upper body up and the arms again up alongside the ears. Warrior one, Virabhadrasana one. Let's start from the top, fingertips. Yep, fingers wide, open them up. Shoulders down the back. Don't let them creep up by your ears, down the back. And then you wanna feel though with those fingers engaged as if somebody's lifting you up but you keep the shoulder blades down. We're then gonna look down at our right foot. If our right knee is drawing in, we want to draw it away. So draw your right knee towards your pinky toe. It's going in that direction. Good, from here we're actually gonna release the arms for a second so we can feel the hips. Release the hands to your hips, you're probably like, thank God. Yeah, I know, but it's nice, you can feel it. Hands to your hips, and now using your hands, just draw the right hip back and the left hip forward as if you're trying to square your hips to the top of the mat. They may not go that way, but you're looking for them to go that way. So right hip back, left hip forward. And then let's move down to the left leg. Feel the left foot planting down like it's strong. And then as you move up that left leg, engage your left thigh muscles and squeeze your left glute. Warrior one. Then you can release your arms all the way back up alongside your ears. Good, from here, we're gonna exhale the hands down to the mat and step the right foot back into our downward facing dog. So we won't go through chaturanga so much today, but back into that downward facing dog. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the left side. So we look at the space between the hands, we step the left foot to that space. Use your hand to help you, not a problem. Then lower the right foot down at about an 80, to degree 75 to 80 degree angle. Start to lift your upper body up and then you can make your adjustments, right? So we look down at the left foot. If we can't see our big toe, it usually means we need to draw the left knee towards the left pinky toe. We can then bring the hands to the hips and it helps us just to draw the left hip back. Whoa, I can feel that, right? Left hip back, right hip forward, right in my right hip flexor. That's where I wanna feel it. And then I'm like, ooh, I wanna feel more in my right leg. Press the right foot down and engage the muscles above your kneecap. So all those muscles above the kneecap, your thigh muscles, there's tons of them, engage them, squeeze your right glute. And now bring the arms back up alongside the ears. I always have this saying, hug the muscles of your arms into your bones. And the way that you can do that and what helps is again, spreading your fingers wide. So notice the difference. If your fingers are just hanging out here, see if you can spread your fingers wide. It's like a high-fiving hand. If you high five somebody, it shouldn't be sloppy and messy, right? It's like, boom, yeah, did it, right? These are your high-fiving hands right here, and that's gonna help you hug the muscles of your arms into your bones. And now we slowly release, the hands come back down to frame the left foot. We step the left foot back to the right foot, downward facing dog. Again, adjust yourself. If you need to bring your knees down to come into down dog, do so. Lift the hips up and bring the hips back downward facing dog. Brilliant, you guys. Take a breath in here if you need to. And if it feels good, open up the mouth and just exhale to empty. <sighs> From here, I'm gonna take you through warrior one, warrior two, and reverse warrior. So again, I want you to look at the space between the hands. Step your right foot up. Again, if you need to and your foot comes here, you use your hand to help you. We know warrior one now, ground down through that back left foot. And we inhale, we come up, warrior one. Remember your strong hands, high-fiving arms right here. Shoulders down the back. We're now gonna exhale, open up warrior two. So I go from here, where my left hip is drawing towards the front of the mat, I'm trying to square it, to opening up my hips. I can move my back foot a little bit so it's more parallel, the blade of the left foot, more parallel to the back of the mat. So I'm here. And then I just move it, but my right knee stays bent over my right ankle. Warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. Really good cue here. Look down at your right knee. If you cannot see your first two toes, your big toe and your second toe, draw your right knee towards your right pinky toe. And then you're like, oh, there it is, right? Maybe go a little bit deeper to make sure that the right knee is bent directly over the right ankle. Same strong back leg that you had in warrior one. Press down through the blade of the left foot, engage the thigh, and then these arms, high five hands. Boom, they're out, shoulders down the back. Oh, feels so much, they're here, that hurts. 
shoulders down the back, and I'm here. I'm here for a breath. You can do this. Breathe in. A little shake in here is good. And breathe out. Don't move this lower body now. Keep this lower body where it is. All I want you to do is flip the right palm up to the ceiling or the sky, and you're just going to move your arms up and back. So the right arm moves up, and then it goes back a little bit. The left hand comes down the back of the left leg, and there you are. It's like a side bend. Think of reverse warrior as a side bend. One more breath here. Breathe in and breathe it out. Amazing, you guys. Come back to center. You're probably like, I need to straighten that right leg. We're going to straighten it. We're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. So turn your right toes in, turn your left toes to face the back of your mat now. So again, that right foot, we're going to come into warrior one. The right foot's at about that 80, 75 to 80 degree angle. We bend the left knee so it's directly over the left ankle. We can take our hands to our hips and we move the hips so that they're more square towards the top of the mat. Left hip back, right hip forward. I look down, I'm like, yep, I can see my first two toes, my knees drawing towards my pinky toe, my back foot is pressing down, and I'm engaging all the way up through that back right leg. From here, I reach the arms up, and then I check. Shoulders down the back, but I got a high five in my hands, right? I'm hugging the muscles of my arms into the bones. Take another breath in in your warrior one. And as we exhale, we open up warrior two. Boom, we're there, right? What happens from warrior one to warrior two is a lot of times people start to straighten through that left leg. Keep it bent. You look down, you check it out, and I'm like, yep, there's my first toe and my second toe. Draw your left knee towards your left pinky toe. Even if your head right now doesn't like this and your left leg is shaking, trust me, your body loves this. It's probably like, thank you for opening me up. So check it out that your shoulders are down the back, not up here, down the back, and those high-fiving hands are extending away from each other. Now keep your lower body exactly where it is. Flip the left palm up to the ceiling or the sky. All we're doing is we're just moving the upper body up and back. Left hand reaches up, right hand slides down the back of the right leg. It's a side bend, reverse warrior through the left hand side of the body. One more breath here, breathe in and breathe it out. Good, and then slowly come back to center, back to a warrior two, straighten your left leg. Brilliant, you guys. Turn your left toes in and just toe heel your feet back to about hip width distance apart. So I'm just gonna take you through a couple more poses one of them is your tree pose, Vriksasana, and then we're gonna do uh, one more on the floor, a little Shavasana, and then it's QA. 30 minutes goes like that, but we're gonna build on this every week. So again, looking at, again, your strong legs, and I want you, you can use a wall. If you have a wall near you and you're working on your balance, use your wall. We're just gonna take it into tree. So you're gonna shift the weight over to the right leg. And when I mean shift the weight over, I mean make a muscle above your kneecap, Squeeze your right glute, your right thigh. Start to bend your left knee. Now, if you've got flexibility in your left hip flexor, catch your left ankle with your left hand and place the left sole of the foot to the inner right thigh. If you're already like, whoa, Nelly, that is way too much, don't. You can bring the left sole of the foot down to the inner right calf. If you're still like, that's just a little bit too much for me today, Bring the big toe down to the instep of the right foot. Boom, you're there, right? Here, here, or here. Hands at heart center. People say it always slides down, right? That's why you need to press the heel and really the ball of your foot into your inner right thigh. So it's not just hanging out there. This is called parabanda. It's foot bond. It's like a lock with your foot. And then maybe your hands come together at heart center. Practice your balance. If you're wobbling out, that's called normal. That's what happens to all of us when we start yoga. Yeah, we're going to work on rebalancing this. And then to release, bring your left knee forward, left foot down to the mat. Take it on the other side. So shift the weight over to the left leg. This needs to be a strong leg. You're grounding down. Remember Tadasana at the beginning? We're lifting up. Ground, lift, like a mountain. So we ground, we've got it, and now we want to lift. So we're going to lift that right leg. Lift it, lift it, lift it. Don't hunch down. Lift, lift, lift. Grab that ankle. Place that right sole of the foot to the inner left calf, to the inner left thigh. Or again, just bring your big toe down to the instep of that. 
From here, don't worry if your knee is a little bit forward. I want you to imagine that your right knee is drawing back, but your right hip is coming forward. Right knee back, right hip forward. What a difference that makes. So when you feel your right hip coming forward, you're like, oh, my right knee will start to come back. So right knee back, but right hip is pressing forward. And again, use the wall if you need to to balance. Maybe you take a few breaths or a breath with your hands at heart center. Brilliant, you guys. Brixasana tree. Slowly bring the right knee back to center. Release the right sole of the foot down to the mat. We're back in Tadasana, right? Ground, lift. Ground, lift. Brilliant, you guys. From here, we're going to head down onto the mat. So we're just going to head down onto the mat and we're going to take it into what's called Janushasana, so, which is just a forehead to knee pose, if you like. But uh, it's really, I always think it's crown of the head to the foot pose, but it is uh, head to knee pose. So we're going to bring the right leg long and you're just going to bend your left knee, just like we did in tree. This is basically seated tree. Left sole of the foot, inner right thigh. Boom, we're there. Just like we were doing in warrior one, take your hands to your hips and just move your hips over so that they're facing more over that right leg. Flex through the right foot, engage this right thigh. And again, we want to find the lift first. So we inhale, reach the arms up. That's gonna help keep that length in the body. And we exhale, we forward fold. Now, what will happen is a lot of you will round. We can fix that. We just simply bend the knee. Bend the knee, keep the shoulders down the back, catch your foot with your hands, that's it. Then from here, you can start to sl slide that heel away little by little, little by little, but the shoulder blades stay down. And a really good pointer is these elbows. They actually are active, even if your leg is straight. Draw your elbows back towards your body as you extend the crown of the head towards the top of your right foot. So elbows draw them back. That's gonna help to keep the shoulder blades down. We don't want them up, we want them down. So one more breath here. Breathe in and breathe it out. Maybe to go a little bit deeper, Janushasana. Inhale to lift your upper body up, release. Bring your left knee back to your chest. Lengthen the left leg long. Bend your right knee, open your right hip, bring the right sole of the foot to the inner left thigh, just like you did in tree. Take the hands to your hips, square the hips over that left leg, just like you did in warrior one, and now we're ready. Left foot is flexed, left thigh engaged. Inhale, arms reach. Keep the shoulder blades down the back though. Exhale, hinge through the hips. Bend the knee as much as you need to, as much as you need to, to catch a hold of the foot, with the hands, and then you draw the shoulder blades down. We then bring the elbows back. Bring the elbows back and the chest forward. Elbows back, chest forward. And we're here for a breath. So this is where your breathing is gonna come in. Stay here, take a deep, full breath in. And if it feels good, of course, open up your mouth and just exhale to empty. Remember how much your left hamstring will love you for this. It will very, very slowly lift yourself all the way up. Brilliant, you guys. Bring your right knee to the center of your chest. Extend the right leg long. Good. And from here, we're just going to make our way down onto our mat for a final twist. So making our way down onto the mat for that final twist. Extend your left leg long. Left leg is long. Hug the right knee all the way into the right shoulder. And a nice way to do this is you bring the right knee out and then in like a half circle, out and then in. Now, with your left hand on that right knee, bring it all the way over to the left. Try not to left, let that right shoulder lift up off the mat. You can extend the right arm out, you can cactus the right arm, but extend it out and maybe just take your gaze ever so slightly over to the right and boom, you're here. If you need to lift the hips up, go ahead, you lift the hip up and then scooch the left hip over to the right a little bit. So if you want a deeper twist, you just lift the left hip up and scooch it over to the right. And you're like, oh, yes. And then we're here just for a breath, like enjoy this twist. 
So we can all do a global breath together. Breathe in. And breathe it out. Doesn't that feel good? Let's actually do two more. It's so nice, this twist. Breathe in for two. And out for two. Maybe just close your eyes. Your body loves twists, okay? Breathe in for three, like it's loving you right now. And out for three. Oh, feels good. Bring your right knee back to center. Lengthen your right leg long, other side. So when you bring the left knee into the chest, imagine you're bringing the left knee out and then in, like a half circle. So out and then in. Now that you've got it up towards that left shoulder blade, area, towards that left armpit area, take the left knee, the left leg, over to the right with your right hand. Your left hip's gonna peel up, good. Yeah, and then you're on your right hip. You can always lift it a little bit and scooch it just like a couple inches over towards the left side of the mat. As you bring your right knee down over to the right side of your body, that right hand, or sorry, the left knee down over to the right side of the body, so left knee is coming down to the right side of the body, extend the left arm out, and without straining the neck too much, you just bring the gaze over to the left. Magnificent twist, three breaths. Maybe close your eyes here, breathe in, and out for one. Maybe you get a little snap, crackle, pop, I just did, breathe in for two, and out for two. Remember how much your body loves twists. It's your spine, it loves you for this. Breathe in for three. And breathe it out for three. Oh, it's like heaven here. And then very slowly, I love twists. Bring your, as you can tell, bring your left knee back to center. Lengthen the left leg long. You're gonna come into Shavasana. Yeah, I'm gonna take you through a relaxation Shavasana and then we'll get into our Q&A. But for, we always end with Shavasana. So just let your legs like flop out, let your arms flop where you drop. Make sure the palms, the hands are facing up. So you're just open, you've just opened your body, you've opened your hip flexors, you've lengthened your spine, you've opened the spine, you found some strength, building strength in your downward facing dog and in your warriors. So you've done what yoga, as far as the physical part can do, the lengthening, the lifting, the opening, the strengthening. And now we just want to lie here in stillness. It's just a minute today. I'm going to get up. You're going to stay down. You're in this open pose, Shavasana. You can let your breath go if you did have control of your breath. Just let your breath go. And just feel now your whole body melting into the mat. So I want you to think whole body melting into the mat. Whole body dissolving into the mat. Whole body melting and dissolving. That's all I want you to think right now is just, yes, my whole body is melting and dissolving into the mat. My whole body is melting and dissolving into the mat. Stay with that, my whole body melting and dissolving. Maybe starting to get a little bit of tingling around the body now, melting and dissolving into the mat. Whole body. And then just think my whole heart is melting and dissolving into the mat, my whole heart. Just let it breathe a little bit here, my whole heart melting and dissolving into the mat. And now my whole head, so important, heavy into the mat, whole head, creating space in between the thoughts, my whole head, just let it melt, let it get heavy, let it dissolve, let it melt, let it get heavy, let it dissolve. So the whole body, the whole heart, the whole head, melting and dissolving into the mat, and you leave that there. And lastly, you just allow your spirit, your true authentic self, your spirit, it just comes up and it gets to breathe. It just gets to breathe. So allow your spirit right now, 
real, true, authentic you a lot. It's just come up for air and breathe. No one's looking, no one's watching, no one's speaking apart from me, but you're not speaking. So just allow your spirit, your true, authentic self just to come up for air and breathe. very, very slowly. You're going to bring awareness back to your body, awareness back to your heart, awareness back to your head. But maybe it feels a little bit different now, a little bit more open, a little bit calmer, more grounded, more space. Just notice that. Start to find movement in your fingers and your toes and your hands and your feet. Just little bits of movement. You can even circle your wrists. You can circle your ankles. Hug your knees into your chest. And just take that roll over. You're just going to roll over to the right-hand side of your mat, rolling over to the right-hand side of your mat into like a little ball. It's so nice, this fetal position, a little ball. Heart doesn't have to work as hard when it's on the right side. It's nice. Take a few breaths here. Breathe in. Breathe it out. Two more breaths, just like that. Breathe in. Open up the mouth. Exhale. You're still on the right-hand side in that wonderful fetal position. One more time. Inhale. Open up the mouth and exhale, yes. And very slowly, you can keep your eyes closed. Gently press yourself all the way up to just a comfortable seated position, just like we did at the beginning of practice. Cross leg, whatever feels good in your seated position. Come up, again, place the palms, the hands down onto your thighs or your knees. And again, roll your shoulders up, back and down. We wanna keep that broadening across the collarbones, that opening in that heart, we just opened it up, the length in the spine. And we bring the hands together at heart center. So we have our fingertips touching, the heels of the hands pressing together. And there's a little gap between the palms. It's what's called Anjali Mudra. Again, it's that energy seal. And now with the hands at heart center, just bring the hands up so that the thumb knuckles come to your forehead center to that wonderful place where we can create, we can imagine, we can visualize called our third eye. And from here, thank you very, very much for joining me today for an amazing live class, Beginner's Yoga Flow. Namaste. And as I always do, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for, from everybody and for everybody around the world uh, joining in for today. It's my first time um, well, doing a, a live yoga beginner's flow um, since, since this uh, sort of lockdown happened. So thank you guys so, so much. Um, I'm going to try to do this every week. Uh, hopefully I can. And um, I just want to open it up now to really a Q&A. So those of you who have a YouTube account, if you're like, how do I chat? All you have to do is create a YouTube account. It doesn't mean that you're going to have a YouTube channel. You just have a YouTube account and you can chat to me here. So I'm just gonna pull my computer a little bit closer. Um, thank you, Deborah from Louisville. Question, do you have a book? I have a book or can you recommend one on yoga for beginners? Um, I think with really yoga for beginners, um, it's hard because there's, it's, there's different styles. And so it just, I think the first thing is looking at Deborah, what style of yoga you want to do, whether it's vinyasa or whether it's dharma or whether it's a yengar, because different schools will teach different, will teach different things. But there's a great book called, okay, thank you. Um, there's a great book from Eric Schiffman out there. Um, which is a great book, Eric Schiffman. The name is escaping me. It's quite big. Um, Eric Schiffman. I can type that in, Eric Schiffman. And that is a great book. Um, okay, so here we go. Thank you, guys. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so uh, I have my hips on, on lock now for my warriors. Brilliant. 
Um, I now realize how many pose imaging incorrectly. Oh, perfect. Yes, it's shoulders down the back. Oh my gosh, it's a big one. Um, and it, yes, of course, another American accent. So Lynn, you must be absolutely must be American. I'm just starting out and I'm severely overweight and tightly jointed. How long will it take me to get to where you are? Honestly, Elizabeth, you have, it's like with anything in life, you've got to start somewhere and you have to prioritize it. So put this in your diary. For me, when I started on my yoga journey over 11 years ago, I was like, this goes in my diary. And literally nothing would take over from that lesson that I would have booked in my diary, unless it was like, it was like an emergency with my kids. Other than that, it was like, it was it was my priority. So make it a priority, Elizabeth. Book in two to three lessons a week and just do it. Don't get discouraged. We all had to start somewhere. What you see here on this mat and my yoga flow, it's taken me, of course, a couple of years, but not 11 years to get to where I'm at, right? I'm still, of course, improving, but you will get there in the next three to six months. You will notice so much improvement. Improvements start to happen with yoga, like right away. They just, honestly, yes, um, yoga, the spirit and practice of moving into stillness. That's it. Thank you. Julie Montague over there behind the scenes. Um, best instruction poses. Oh, thank you so much. Um, you, it doesn't matter if you have a long way to go. You've got to start somewhere. That's, it. that's what I tell my kids. And that's probably if you have a family or whatever. It's, we always tell people we have to start somewhere, but then we forget to tell ourselves. You just have to start somewhere. So keep coming back with classes with me because we'll start to break down these poses. Before you know it, you're going to be like flowing. You're going to be like, my hips feel better. My spine feels better. My shoulders, my hamstrings. Um, uh, thank you, your husband who helps with the, with the camera. Thank you, Estella. I will tell him. In your experience, how long does it take to open up more and get the back straight? I have it curled and have to keep my legs bent. That's okay. What I want you to work on, Tatiana, is shoulders down the back and then move your hips. So imagine your shoulders and your hips going back, but your chest is extending forward. So shoulders and hips draw back, but your chest is extending forward. In yoga, there's always what's called a dual action. So when even in Tadasana, we ground, but we lift. So you want to find the dual action in everything. When something is grounding you down, another part of your body is opening and lifting you up. Um, oh, good. I'm so glad that you found me on Grokker, Elizabeth. That is amazing that you're doing my happy yoga sequence. Brilliant. Um, the next best thing to see you in person, especially at your Mapperton Yoga Retreat. Yes, Renee, you were here for my very first yoga retreat, right in this space right here. What would you eat or drink pre or post yoga? Honestly, Molly, for me, I usually, if I'm going to do a harder yoga class, I'll have a banana. So to be honest, I will just have a banana if I need something. Post, water. You just, unless you're feeling a little bit dizzy after the yoga, and some people do from doing the forward folds, you know, just have like uh, some lemon, yeah, which will have natural sugars in it, a squeeze of lemon in a hot water or in some cold water, and that should be plenty rather than using sort of you know, sort of the, the fake sweeteners as we like it. Um, two to three is doable. Exactly. Been trying to do a split for months. Lourdes, I feel like I'm going down pretty good and the next day I'm back to square one. That's it. So it's like downward facing dog. Okay. It, downward facing dog, it's going to feel different every single day. I've been doing down dog for over 11 years. It feels different every day. Think of it, Lourdes, as this. It's a good thing that it's different every day because if it was the same, life would be really boring. It's like a yoga pose is like a day, yeah? If, if it was the same every day, we would get sick of it, yeah? So you've got to look at your yoga pose as the same as your day. Thank goodness every day is a different day. Thank goodness when we go into the same yoga pose, it usually feels different every day. It's a good thing. You feel more in your body. Um, thank you, Elizabeth, so much. Great tips this morning. I've tried yoga over the years, but it hurts my wrists. Any tips to help with this? What it is, is of course, you're all, I know that it can hurt your wrist to begin with, but Melissa, it's very, very hard to actually injure a wrist unless you fall right down on it, right? So in yoga, we're in safe. So yes, there's a lot of weight on the wrist, but what I want you to think of is lifting up. So whenever your wrists come down, you're still finding that lift. So even in something like a high plank, yeah, get the shoulders, get your joints stacked. But again, you're lifting up through your core. So here I'm sinking, that's gonna hurt my wrist. 
Here, I can feel my core lifting me up, lifting up, not to here. That's my hips lifting. I just want a little movement of my core lifting. Core is engaged. And we'll talk about this a little bit more, what's called Uddiyana Bandha, um, a little bit more. Um, let me just make sure I've got all of the questions um, here. Uh, thank you guys for all of your thank yous. Yes, perfect. Um, yeah, and again, the more that you do this, the easier, I promise you, it becomes. And you will then be doing our flow classes, um, uh, our flow classes uh, before you know it. Um, so brilliant. Thanks, you guys. And again, this was a live class, but if you feel that somebody also is interested in yoga, this link is just here. Anybody can have access to this link. Obviously, it won't be live, but they'll be able to hear me saying exactly what I'm saying right now. Um, so yeah, when you first started yoga, how frequently did you, did you practice every day? No, Molly, I didn't. When I first started yoga, it was about three times a week. So three times a week, then maybe I upped it to four. Sometimes now I'll do five to six. Um, and then sometimes I'll still just do three. But I would say with yoga, try to, if you're starting out, try to do three. Um, three, two to three. Um, great. Oh, thank you. Wait, spark of interest. I've got to look at your name. Wait, one, one more time. I know where you are. You're up here. One second. I'm going to find you. If you put this is awesome further up. Uh, Jeanette, there you go. Thank you, Jeanette. Um, brilliant. Uh, I've been doing yoga for a while, but still learn from your great explanations and a nice way to start your day. That's brilliant. Um, Tatiana's asked, do I follow a plant-based diet? I mean, I'd say my diet is 98% plant-based. Um, I don't do meat. I haven't had meat for years. I don't do cows. Um, I do occasionally do some uh, goat's uh, butter um, and some, uh, not really so much cheeses, maybe a little bit of goat's cheese. And then if I'm by the sea and I know that the fish is fresh, um, and it's been sustainably caught. I will have fish, but um, not very often. Um, thank you guys so much. And again, if you're interested, we're doing uh, we're doing a live a live tour of Mapperton with my father-in-law, the Earl of Sandwich, in about an hour's time. And we'll be looking at the first Earl of Sandwich's journals, really never seen before. We're pulling them out of the library. We're going to show you some fascinating stuff. In the first Earl of Sandwich, yes, yeah, 1666 is, I think, the date of the first Earl. Yeah, so, so we're looking at, you know, 350 years ago. Um, the No, 400. And, oh, I can't do the math. 350 years ago. There we go. Um, great. Bex has said, I'm still fairly new to yoga. And if you just jump in, it's easy to get into the flow. It doesn't hurt to jump in. Oh, thank you, Bex. She gives you many options for your at when you're, when you're flowing. Exactly. Um, thank you, Michelin, so much. So again, those of you still watching, if you do just want to jump in, I do um, hour flows four times a week. I would say that the Monday and the Wednesday classes are a little bit more all level. And even as a beginner, if you just want to jump right in, I would say go to the Monday and the Wednesday class. Friday is a little bit more uh, dynamic because it's what's called mandala vinyasa and Sunday I kind of throw everything at you so if you are looking to do an hour class and more of an all-level one where I really give options for those of you who are just beginners um, uh, look at my Monday and my Wednesday classes yeah okay great you guys I'm gonna sign off for now and get into a different outfit because I'm about to go in an hour live with my father-in-law if you're interested in our live tours I'm just gonna type that down here they're free so the live tours are free. They're about 30 minutes long every Tuesday at, because we don't have visitors now, we're closed to the public. So they're every Tuesday at four o'clock UK time. That's 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. They're about 30 minutes. They're free. And you learn something interesting about the Earl of Sandwich um, dynasty, if you like. Um, there we go. When will the Eastner episode air for your show? Patty, it's the last one. So Eastner is the last one. We saved the best for last. No, but Inverary was great as well. One of my favorites. So next week is Flores Castle. I'm back up in Scotland. Um, so hopefully you can join me, join me there. Um, oh, good, Elizabeth. Thanks for taking the time to explain the poses. Picked up several new tips. Think I've been doing wrong without formal instruction. Okay, that is brilliant. And again, we're going to build on this. So next week... We're going to do a lot more, and this is going to go a little bit faster, yeah? 
next week when we do another beginner's um, flow. So we're just gonna keep adding on. Um, okay, great, you guys, I'm gonna sign off and hope to see you guys soon. Yes, Martin, come back. Just you, the, the live link, Martin, you're joining on now, but the live link is like, good. You can just rewind it and go back to it and watch the, and watch the whole thing. Um, so yeah, and then every week we'll be breaking down a little bit more until we get into like an awesome flow, which we're gonna build on the flow every single week. Okay, I'm gonna sign off. Um, bye for now, you guys. See you next week or hopefully this week in some of my flow classes.